exalt you this morning. We exalt you. We put you in that high place. No matter what distractions, no matter what obstacles have come our way this week, Father, we choose right now to put you above, above everything, above every, every bad thing, above every good thing. Father, we put you in that high place where you belong. We exalt you this morning. You're greater. You're greater than that. You're greater than that. And we thank you, Father. We exalt you. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for, for all you're doing in the people of, of this church, this community. Lord, you're so good. We acknowledge you, we exalt you, and we thank you, Father. Lord, we say have your way in this service. Move in the people and the hearts the way you see fit. We thank you for the message that's coming forth. And we just exalt you in this service and in our lives. In Jesus' name. Church, if you agree with that, let me hear you say amen. 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 You guys can be seated. After you high five two or three people, got you, got you. I just thought y'all were getting away with it. How's everyone doing this morning? I got a wonderful, I got a great. How's everyone doing this morning? There it is. Y'all sound excited to be in church. Well, hey, welcome to church. My name is Austin, youth pastor here at Beyond, and on behalf of Pastor Nate and Evan, I just want to thank y'all for being here. You made a great choice being in church this morning, don't you think? Yeah. So, hey, I want to tell you real quick about a few things going on, but before we do that, if you are new, newer, on the new-ish side, fall in that category anywhere, I want to give you this number if you have not received it yet. That number is 479-551-5111. And why do I want to give you this number? I want to give you this number because this is how you can text us. This is not a bot. We actually have somebody on the other end. And this is a way you can text us and find out what's going on in Beyond Church. Uh, if you need prayer in your life, I mean, you know that things come up in life. And this is what we're here for. We're here to partner with you and be the church in your life. And one way we can do that and be in the know is if you text us and let us know about that. Okay? And, uh, and then not to mention, I want to go to the next point. This is opt-in, opting in, if you will. Same number. And if you haven't done this, I want you to do this real quick. You can pull your phones out, and you can text the word NEWS. Everybody say NEWS. You can text the word NEWS to that same number. And basically what you're doing, you're opting in to get information about church and then what's going on. So we have events going on. This this church is open. We think we say it more than uh, Chick-fil-A because we're open on Sundays, right? So life's happening at this church. So we have things going on, and, uh, and that's for you to know and be a part of. And so one way you can know about those things is to receive the informational text. Uh, you can opt out of that anytime, but this is a good way uh, for us to get information into your hands, okay? Everybody good with that? All right. Hey, we got Starting Point. Uh, if you haven't heard, Landon went over this last week, we revamped Starting Point. So what does that mean? Revamped Starting Point, basically, we believe that God's called each person to a local body. If you've been coming to church here, you've, you've heard that. If you're newer, uh, we, we believe that there's a local body God's called you to, right? Maybe beyond church is that place. Maybe it's not. That's okay. But wherever God's called you, that's where we want you to find, right? And so if beyond is that place, this is what Starting Point's all about. This is where you can go online, and, and our revamping of this is you can go on our website, beyondchurch.org, and you can uh, you can click on the sessions so you can do these sessions as you will, right? So uh, I think before it was videos. You had to sit and watch, or maybe 30, 40 minutes. Not too long, but how many of you know, if you're anything like me, attention span's a little short, right? It's hard for me to find 40 minutes to sit at a computer and, uh, and, and watch something all the way through. I think if you watch YouTube and all that, it's like eight minutes now. I think you see that's about the time span that people sit and one, do one thing. So we revamped it. We made several videos that are clear cut of what we believe. Uh, you can see the titles on every one of those, the topical videos. Uh, but there's videos on there you can go through and find out the heart of Beyond Church, part of our pastors, part of our staff, and what's going on around here. Uh, and then finally, you'll end with a, a live session now, and that'll be here, and that's going to be on September 11th. So if you want to be a part of that, if you want to join our amazing serve team, get plugged in, bring your supply to this body, and then find out if God's called you here, this is how you do that. Amen? So you can go online, you can, you can watch those videos as you will before that deadline of September 11th, and then if, uh, if you want to visit that or attend that last session, it'll be live and awaken after, uh, after Sunday morning service that morning. Good? All right. So you can go to our website and, and get all the info on that. Next, we have, listen, there's certain things that when it comes back around, you just know. The McRib at McDonald's. 
There's just certain things that you just know when it's back. And can I tell you what? Small groups are back, baby. All right. Now, we got small groups that are coming up. Uh, they are back. You can go to our website. Uh, I think Landon had you pull your phones out last week. Uh, you can go online right now, and you can see the groups that we have, uh, the leaders that we have, and you can join a group on there. Uh, and, man, what, what better way just to, to build relationships with people in the same body that God's called you to be in. Amen? So when we build relationships, we're doing life together, and this is just a good way that you can get with different uh, groups. we got a busy schedule, and uh, you can get with other people and do life together. Amen? All right. So make sure you go to our website and sign up for a small group. And then next, we have the men's golf tournament. How many golfers we got in here? Dang. Whew. All right. So I want to be on one of the three hands that went up in this room. Okay. So uh, if you do not play golf on the regular, that's okay. You can still be a part of this. All right. So we got our men's golf tournament that's coming up on September 17th. Everybody say September 17th. <laughs> Was there a question mark on some of y'all there? I, I feel like y'all are asking me a question right then. September 17th, you see the graphic here. Uh, we have our men's golf tournament, $50 to play. It'll be at 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. We will have registration starting at 7.30, okay? So make sure you go to our website, you sign up. I think you go with the information counter out here and get, uh, get signed up. Four-man scramble, okay? Four-man scramble format. You got to have at least one Beyond Church member on your team. Is that clear? Everybody understand that rule? All right. So you can get three people that do not go to this church, live anywhere in the world, they can play on your team as long as you have one Beyond Church person on your team. Uh, you might notice on the bottom there, has the youth logo, it says we'll be raising money for youth camp 2013, or I almost said 2013, 2023, we're going backwards. Uh, no, we're, we're going to start now, all right, we're going to start getting money ready because I believe we took 80 kids to camp last year, we're believing that's going to go up to 100, all right, and so we're going to start right now. Um, what that will look like, we'll have contests, we'll have different competitions. Uh, might, I, I got to get this cleared with the, with the boss, a.k.a. Pastor Nate. Uh, uh, maybe, a, maybe a PPC gun. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we'll launch a ball. We, we'll see. Uh, but there'll be different things that you can do by mulligans, uh, drink cards, all these little things. If you've been in a golf tournament before, uh, we'll have those there, and we're going to make it fun, and we're going to raise some money for camp, and we're going to have fun as men playing golf. Amen? Awesome. So that's all we got for announcements. We're getting ready to give if you want to get started on that. And uh, Dalton, I don't know if I gave you this verse, but we're going to turn to Psalms 34.3. Psalm 34.3. Why are they getting this pulled up? You pick your translation. I'll read what I've got here. It says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let's exalt his name together. I mean, you know, that's what we did this morning. And that's real easy to do on a Sunday morning, right? Real easy to do on a Wednesday night when we're in church. But this is a lifestyle we want to live, right? We want to live a lifestyle of magnifying God in our lives. And here's the thing. When I, when I think of magnifying, like how many of y'all think of the magnifying glass? Like that's usually what most people would, would think of, right? What does that magnifying glass do? Makes it bigger, right? In a way. It makes it clearer to see. But does that object actually get bigger? No, that object's still the same. So when we think of this with God, when we magnify God, are we making God bigger? No, God's, God's big already. We're just magnifying how we see, right? And so that's why I love when we have our, we've, we've done a few services in youth that where we just, we'll get in a circle and we'll just talk about what's God done in your life. Give us your testimony. And it's good to hear testimony. And when we think of that, we think, oh, 20 years ago, I got saved. You know, that was my testimony. And nothing against that by any means. But what's your testimony today? Like, God's doing something right now. God's doing something today. If it's a parking lot, front row parking lot, if it's the fact I've got air in my lungs, if it's the fact that uh, some, a debt was paid off, it don't matter what it is. Man, God's moving in our lives all the time. And when we magnify what God's doing right now, it starts to, it starts to make a lifestyle of seeing God move in every, every area of your life. Right? And when we do that, how do we, how do we, how do we magnify God? This is what it said. It said, with thanksgiving. That's how we magnify God in our life, when we're thankful. When we look at the things that, we're, that he's done in our life, whether it be small or big in our eyes, man, God's doing, it's a, it's a good gift. 
The Bible says that every good gift, it, it comes from God. Every good gift. The new pair of shoes, the, the debt paid off, the, the, the little things to the big things, they're all important to God because he is a good God. Pastor Nate's been talking about that the last couple of weeks. And God's a good God. And when we start to magnify him and thank him for the good things he's doing, we'll start to realize, man, he's been a lot, lot, lot gooder, a lot gooder than we think. Amen. So I just want to encourage you with that as we get ready to give. If, uh, if, and if you're needing financial blessing in your life, and the word, the word has an answer to that. And when we give, there's a promise attached to it. He's good. He's a good father. And so we just, we just want to thank him today, Father. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for all the good gifts in our lives, Father. We thank you just for the fact that you are our God. We thank you that you chose us. And, Father, we just thank you that we can live a life that is pleasing to you. And, Father, that we can, we can be the hands and feet of Jesus in our community. We thank you for the opportunity to give today. We thank you for the opportunity to be in this house. And, Father, we just thank you. We thank you that, that you're magnifying the goodness of, your, of you in our lives. And we just thank you that our eyes are open to see that. Every area you're moving in our lives, Lord. And we'll be quick to give thanks. Not only in our heart, but in our mouth. We say thank you to you today for your goodness. We thank you for the opportunity to give today. We love you. We, we pray that the, uh, all the tithes coming in, Lord, that they're, they're, there's something attached to that money coming in. And we just thank you for, for stewardship. We thank you for the hearts to know uh, what that money is going to. And we'll steward it well. And we just thank you that you'll be pleased and you'll be blessed and you'll be magnified in this community through this church, through these hands. We love you, Lord. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. going to give uh, Landon a hard time. Well, thanks, Austin, for not drinking my water today. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It's good. Hey, welcome. I know we're here again uh, saying welcome. I'm just so thankful to be here, and I believe that um, the Bible tells us that the steps of a righteous man are ordered to the Lord, uh, and, and I believe we're here not by accident. Um, and, and even not just a righteous man's steps are ordered. The Bible talks about how um, how the Lord draws men, you know. So whether your steps were ordered or you were drawn, I believe you're in the right place. Uh, something we, we, we're talking about, we're in the right place at the right time, doing the right things with the right people. That's my testimony. It's not my, just my confession, it's my testimony. And so um, we're going to jump right into the Word this morning. And uh, so we'll just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Uh, just lift your, put your hands to like, like you're going to receive. Father, we just say thank you today for what you've prepared for us. We thank you for all that you have. You give us eyes that see and hearts that understand. In Jesus' name, amen. So we've been in this, uh, we're, we're, I can't tell you that we're in a series because we haven't t- tagged it or named it. But if you'll look at the, the last, um, I would say, five or six weeks, we've really been talking about um, God's will for you and me to walk in victory. We've been talking about Matthew chapter 22, 37 through 40, where it talks about, this, it talks about love the Lord your God. And, and we know that God's commands towards, for us are for our good, right? And so he tells us, for your good... Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, strength. And there's another command just like it, and that's love your neighbor as yourself. And so we know that these two things, if we could get these things worked on, 
um, or not even just worked on, but just see differently. How many of you know when you see differently, you be differently, right? There's just that when you see a certain way, it's just there's a response from, you, from your, you know, if you see that somebody, or in, in your mind, if you see that somebody did something to you and hurt you, how many of you know a lot of times because you see it that way that they intentionally hurt you, the response on your end would maybe be to what? Hurt back. Well, you, this exactly. Thanks for being honest. This is exactly because of how you see it changes. There's an action when you see someone genuinely is trying to love you. There's a response, right? And so we've been we've been talking about uh, these these things and just uh, um, changing uh, how we see God. Because Bible tells us to love the Lord our God. Bible also tells us to love our neighbor and what is love. And, and so we've been talking about believing the best and critique, not critiquing things like that. Um, but not really just those things. You know, it's hard to explain other than just God wanting you to walk in victory. And um, a couple of weeks ago, I came back and just kept hearing in my heart, uh, let the talk to the people uh, about my goodwill for their life. My goodwill for their life. Do you believe that God has a good will for your life? Do you believe that his will for you is good? Well, a lot of people don't. A lot of Christians don't. They say they do, but deep down, their hope is hampered because they're not sure. They're not sure if what I'm hoping for is really God's will, and it almost seems to, it, what it does is it causes us to pull back and become hopeless. On Wednesday night, we, I, I talked about um, just getting your hopes up. You know, we're supposed to have our hopes up. We're supposed to hope bigger then we're supposed to be believing in hope based upon what? Based upon the character of God. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 5 that hope is a result of character. Romans chapter 5 verse 4 it talks about how it, the per perseverance produces character and character produces hope. Character is this, authentic, what it really is. When you and I know the character of God and what it really is, hope is what results. And this is the very reason that the enemy would love to attack the character of God all the way from the beginning. Did God really say he doesn't want you like him? Talking to Adam in the garden, but also talking to you, talking to me. And all over today, there, there's this talk about the word of God. Not How many of you know you attack somebody's character when you attack what they've said? You say, well, they said this. How many of you know if I was, if I was to say, Pastor Austin you know, told me the only reason he, uh, he, he doesn't even like teaching uh, when, or when you kids come on a Wednesday night. He just thinks you're snotty-nosed punks, and he just puts up with it only for a paycheck. That, that would kind of be hurtful, wouldn't it? That would be attacking his character. The next time you see him, you might think a little differently, and he says, hey, how are you? You might think... Well, I don't know that I want to open up to you. Matter of fact, I don't know that I want to trust you. Hmm. I don't want to trust you. So when character is attacked, trust or lack of trust is the result. Would you agree? Okay. John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word... Okay, let's go all the way through like 9, right? And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His goodness, His glory. So this, the Word of God, Jesus, he talked about in the beginning was the Word. He, he, Jesus is the Word made flesh. Hmm. So when you attack the Word of God, the character of God, the person of God, Jesus is attacked. His character is attacked. This is what's happening right now. You don't know if you can trust this Word. Is this not happening right now? All through... Like the Bible's being questioned on levels, or even attacked. And not even just attacked in the world, attacked as within the church, or even to the enemy jacking with you, oh, did God really say? Did God really say? Is that really what he meant? If he said it, then how come he didn't do that? How come, if he said he loves you, and he said he wants to know, how come he walked right by you? So Austin says he loves you. He says this. He says, tells you guys, okay, but uh, here you coming up, and you're having a rough day, and you're hoping he just could talk to you just for a moment, and he looks right past you and goes and talks to somebody else. He must not love you. Isn't that easy to just kind of throw that out there? 
Because it's based upon how you see, based upon how you think. You know, uh, Austin was talking about how we can't uh, hang for more than eight minutes, yet it's crazy because there's this, this uh, my kids watch YouTube and it seems like a whole lot more than eight minutes. Um, and my, if, I, if I ever get caught on one of these things, it's a whole lot more than eight minutes. There's this, uh, there's, this, there's, there's this video online and the guy says, this is your daily dose of internet. How many of you have ever seen that? Come on. I hope you have a good day, right? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Come on, raise your hand, somebody. You're going to have to interact with me. I'll keep you here all day. <laughs> okay? This, this is your daily dose of internet. And the cool thing is, is, is these the videos are just a couple minutes long, but they just they stream, boom, boom, boom. I don't know how many doses you have, because your daily dose is like, must be like 15, 20, because they're just like, you know. This is the way it works, though. And you see things you haven't seen before, and you, a lot of times you go, wow, you see little cats doing things or dogs doing things. You see explosions. You see just crazy stuff, and you're like, wow, that's cool. I've never seen that before. Sometimes you're like, whoa, I didn't know that's how that worked. I want, I want you to see just this is the way that the... It's, we're so inundated with information, and we, we're constantly making decisions and cost, constantly making judgment calls. And... Uh, if, if you'll go ahead and put the, my first picture up there, not the picture of, of me or Caleb. Um, isn't that amazing? Isn't that? I mean, God, the heavens declare the glory of God. The, the, the mountains, the Bible tells us, they bow down and worship him. Isn't that cool? Next picture. So does snowbanks. Dirty snowbanks. Isn't that true? What did you call it? What did you call it? What did you call the picture before? Because someone told you it was mountains, God's beautiful mountains that the heavens bow down, right? Kind of interesting. There's a way that seems right to a man because it's based upon what we think, what we see, what we're told. In the end, it's tough. But when we think about the Lord, let's go ahead and put the next picture up. We think about the, not that one, that wasn't the one. You moved him around. All right, it's okay, that's okay. Go to the next one of that picture that is the picture. You can't put the, the hidden one up first. You gotta put the, put the hidden, go put the other one up. Of, uh, there you go. So we were gonna, I was just going to lead you right into just talking about how God keeps you even in the storm. He'll keep you above the waves, walking above the waves, right? I mean, doesn't that kind of look like the waves? He'll also keep you, next picture, from falling on the ice. Help me, somebody. He isn't yoking around up there. There's no yoke about this picture, right? Because it's not a yoke. It's a peach. Oh, wow. What? Is that a half of a peach in heavy syrup or light syrup? In a bowl. You know, it's not, everything's not as it seems. Isn't that the truth? We, we got to realize that, that, let's go to the next picture, how mighty and wonderful and awe-powerful that God is. The heavens declare His glory. The heavens declare His glory. So the heavens declare His glory. We could have just stuck with the word. But you know, the heavens declare His glory, but the of God, but fireworks declare the glory of man. I mean, you could look at that and you could say, wow, that's, that looks kind of like fireworks. Kind of looks like stars, kind of looks like these nebula pictures. All of this is just to simply say, just make a point for you and me that a lot of times we're making calls about things with inadequate information taking somebody's word or experience or what they said or how the enemy would love to set you and I up, which I really wanted to set you up good. I did the first one, then the next one, not so good. But I wanted to set you up and just move on and just, you know, set you up. 
to where you believed, so where you were deceived. Isn't that the mass? Isn't that what his basically his name means? He's the deceiver. So the enemy is really great at putting things together and then showing you a picture that says those are mountains, those are waves, that's an egg, <laughs> and yet it's not. And we can make decisions based upon those kind of things instead of holding to what God says it is. There's a way that seems right to a man, but the end leads to the destruction. The Bible tells us in Proverbs, different, different places that there's where we would think. But he tells you and I that we're to trust not with what we understand, but we're to trust in the Lord with all of our, our heart and lean not to our own understanding. So I, I, wanna, I wanted to start out th- uh, this morning by taking back, and I'm staying in this vein for, for a little while, um, just talking about the goodness of God, the character of God, and what the Lord was talking to me about is tell them about my good will for their life. When my character is attacked, my, the, the will of, when the character of God is attacked, the will of God is put into question in your and my life. When the will of God is put into question, your prayers are stopped. Your mouth is silenced, and more often than not, what we do is we go alone. Have you ever had been a kid um, that was hungry or thirsty or you really wish you could have something? Um, and, and this happens in, in, in homes. This happens with dad, usually more than mom, unless mom is a little bit tougher than dad, um, where the kid is hungry or thirsty or wants that gumball, and they really want it, but they're not willing to ask. Have you ever been there where you're thirsty, but you're not willing to ask because you don't want to inconvenience that person? You believe in your mind, you believe that the character of their character is that it would inconvenience them, so you say, I'm good, or you say nothing at all. Anybody ever been there? You think that that happens with God? The same way that we have with our father, and you know what happens sometimes when, you, when you're a kid? I got three boys. Um... My older two, they, they, they a lot of times send the youngest one to come ask. Is this true, Samuel? <laughs> Why do you do that? Why do you not want to ask? Because you don't want to hear no? Because you're not sure and confident of my will towards you concerning that thing, but you think that my will towards him might be a little bit more better? I don't even know if that's a word <laughs> or grammar. You, you might believe that he might have more favor on his life because he's the youngest, because he's loved. You see the way that the enemy attacks? You're not loved as much as him, so he can ask and he can get something that you can't get. It's a lie. It's a complete lie. And I was listening to a message this, uh, this week um, and I thought it was great because I see this happen in my life. Around Easter, um, the week before, sometimes Easter Day, we'll hide eggs. Uh, and we hide plastic eggs, and we put jelly beans and stuff like that in them. And sometimes, well, always, we put money in them as well. And uh, that's kind of fun. It's fun because my kids, my boys are like, candy's okay, money's better. They're, they've grown up. And so we'll hide eggs in the yard, and they, they go find them, and there's a contest who can find. And then this last year, we hid the giant golden egg. Like it, really had, it was a big one with big cash in it. And, uh, and we hid that one. And so I, we hid a couple, like a, probably 100 eggs throughout the yard, and we said, all right, ready, go. And the whole time um, it's going on, I want my kids to find the eggs. Did you know that? When you hide eggs, you, you want them to find them. There, I could hide some eggs, let me tell you. They wouldn't find but then I would be throwing my dollars away, or a couple years later, I'd hit them with a lawnmower or something, you know, and find them. But anyway, I was listening to this message, and, uh, and this pastor was talking about how that's what they do, the same thing on Easter. And, and he was talking about how one of his sons, or his grandson, came to his son and, and said, Hey, Dad, where did you hide the big egg? Where did you hide the egg with all the cash in it, the one that has the most? And his son, being so impressed, that his grandson, I don't know if this is making sense. In other words, the little grandson came and asked the dad. But the pastor's telling the story, okay? And, and, and this dad was so impressed that his son would believe about him, that he would tell him 
where this egg, he asked, but this kid came and asked me, you're not supposed to do that. How many of you know? You're not supposed to do that. You're not. But he was so impressed that his kid asked him that. He told him. Isn't that cool? Isn't that, I mean, yet you, we, we, we see that this is the, somebody understanding the character of their father very well. The interesting thing about that, that story is I still, when, when these things are going out, uh, and maybe this is just me wanting my kids to win, my kids, all of them to win, I'll walk around with those kids that are having a little less in their basket, kind of walk around and, you know, like, <laughs> oh, oh, I'm trying to give it away. That's what our father wants to do, just give it away. And he wants your, you and me to, to have the boldness, and I wouldn't even say the audacity, but the understanding of his character that we would ask according to his will. According, let me say this, according to his character. According to his character. Do you believe God's good? I mean, he does tell us this, yet we haven't been there. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. He tells us to pray here on earth as it is in heaven. Anybody here been to heaven? No? Nobody's been to heaven. Okay. How many of you have read a little bit about heaven? Okay. How many of you have an idea, not just in your head, but in your heart, what heaven is to be? Okay. So when you see something that doesn't seem like what would be God's will here on this earth, you and I are are told or command to pray and to ask according to the will of heaven. That's kind of a big, a big deal. Because you think about heaven and how awesome heaven is going to be. How many of you know in heaven, uh, if you like a certain, I mean, the, the, you're going to, he's good. How many of you ever thought about heaven like this? When you get to heaven, if you're thirsty, there might not be nothing to drink. Or how about, you know, the Lord, he talks about this, the, 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 the feast, the, 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 the wedding feast. How many of you ever thought about when we come, go to heaven and we're at the banquet that there just might be just barely enough portions? How many of you, under, how many of you know that you can eat and the food's going to be good? And you, there will be bread there. Because you can't live on bread alone, but you've got to have bread too. He is the bread of life. These are, this is true statements. <laughs> All right, let's stick with this. So we're talking this morning, really, um, we're talking about loving the Lord our God. And we talked a few weeks back about 1 Corinthians 13, the love chapter. We've read it. Now love is patient. Love is kind. Love, you know. And we talk, I mean, you, if you've read it, you talk, now these three remain, it says, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love, the end of the chapter. But we, we, we so often we say, love the Lord your God, but we don't really understand what love means. And I just pulled out this one picture, one picture of what love means in 1 Corinthians 13, 7 out of the Amplified. In your translation, it might say hope, okay? Hope the best. But look what it says. It says, love bears up under anything and anything that comes. It's ever ready to believe the best. So when you love the Lord your God, you know, part of loving the Lord your God it would be to believe the best about the Lord your God. The, also the same way of loving other people, right? To love, it's just, it's an interesting concept and, and to believe the best. I want you to put the, see this in uh, Psalms 37, or 35, 27. The Bible tells us that, and this is David, uh, he's talking, he's a man, the Bible tells us a man after God's own heart. Um, he said, let them shout for joy and be glad who favor my righteous cause and let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. He's saying, guys, God has been good to me. And if you are glad that he's been good to me, shout with me because God's been good to me. I'm his servant and he wants me blessed. Hey guys, God's been good to me. Isn't that cool? God's been good to me. Shout with me. Listen, this, this is what he's saying. Do you believe that God takes pleasure in the prosperity of you, his servant? Amen. Do you believe that? Yeah. It's interesting because I, uh, when, you, when you see this, uh, the, God takes pleasure 
and the prosperity of his servant. What I've seen in the word uh, over and over and over again is, is where with, Paul, with Paul, he talks a lot about, David talks a lot about God's will towards them. His good will towards them. I even see, even concerning pretty much every book that Paul writes, he says, I, by the will of God, I am this, by the will of God. I, an apostle, I, a chosen one, I, have this, by the will of God. What are you by the will of God? What are you by the will of God? You know, the Bible tells us that Jesus came, Luke, and he opened the book of Isaiah. He goes into the temple, and he opens the book of Isaiah. This is found in Luke chapter 4. Uh, verse 18, 19, he, and he says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. I'm going to go ahead and read it, Luke 4, because I think it's just uh, four eighteen. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. What are you by the will of God? What do you have by the will of God? Do you have good news? Do you have a promise or do you just have a problem? Because the will of God towards you would be that you would have a promise. What, is, what are you by the will of God? He sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoner. Are you bound? Well, not by the will of God. Not by the will of God. He goes on to say, he sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoner. Recovery of sight to the blind. Are, 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 you, are you lost in darkness? Are your kids lost in darkness? Not by the will of God. Are you in a, in a, depressed, a, a depressed state? Have you been battling depression? where it doesn't seem like you can get out, you just don't know how, not by the will of God. Not by the will of God. He came to set the oppressed free. This is the will of God, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. What are you by the will of the Lord? I'm the favored one. God's favor is up on me. It's like Caleb. Caleb has favor, but so does Samuel my middle son, and Matthew, my eldest son. They all have my favor. It's the, it's, they're favored. So you know what they can do? They can ask anything according to, to, to my will, to my character, that it would be done for them. Uh, I want you to see this in Luke. He tells us this. Uh, I think it's, let me, let me go ahead and go there. Um, excuse me, John 16, 23 through 24. He said, you, here unto you have asked nothing in my name, but you're going to ask the Father now in my name. You've asked me everything. Now you're going to ask the Father in my name. And you're going to ask that your joy might be complete. John 16, 23 through 24. It's okay. You can write it down. You can look it up yourself. You can see it's true. We, I'm going to keep moving. You don't, don't worry about it. God wants your joy full. How do you know? Because he said. This is Jesus talking right here. How do you know? God wants, your, God wants you happy? God wants you... Well, Yeah. That sounds like a prosperity Joel Osteen gospel. It's the gospel. Uh, the good news. So many times we, we, our righteousness, the Bible tells us, well, it's like, ra- it's like rags, filthy rags, the Bible tells us. But so many times, the longer that we're in church, the more we think that our righteousness and God's character and will towards us is based upon our behavior or we think we can earn and God owes me something. And when I'm in the place of where God owes me, what happens is that I, I, I'm in that place of standing above him. And where I stand above him, I'm in the place of being very critical and making the call. Is that not right? Ephesians chapter 2, uh, verse 8 it is by grace you've been saved, right? Grace, but yet through faith. So this morning we're talking about the will of God towards you. What are you by the will of God? And really, um, get, again, you and I walking in the will of God. What, you and I to walk in the will of God. What, how, am I, is my life walking in the will of God? If you're free, yep. If you're, if you're oppressed, nope. If you're healed, Yep. Walking in the will of God. How do I walk in the will of God? Well, if you look in, in, in James, the Bible tells us that, that the way that our lives are steered are by our tongue. So our tongue has a lot to do with what we see and what we experience and how we navigate our way in and out through our tongue. And I'm not saying if you are battling sickness that it's your fault. 
And God, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that God's will for you and me is to walk in victory. And for you and me to walk in that victory, 1 John 5, 4, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. There's going to have to be the exercise of faith in our lives. Yeah. Pastor Evan said a couple weeks ago, you know, in America, based on the world standards, obesity is a very big problem. Obesity in America. If you've traveled overseas, you'll notice a lot of times that, that, that people out overseas, they're, they're, they're a lot thinner. A lot of that has to do with simply the American diet, what's allowed in our foods, not allowed in their foods. My father-in-law and mother-in-law, they just moved back to the States. Um, they were over in England for 10, 12 years. And when they come back to the States, they said in two weeks they can put on 12 pounds, just boom. Because it's just a complete difference, the amount of salt, the amount of just all kinds of things, that preservatives, things that are in there that stick there in our bodies. So it's a problem, right? But so is spiritual obesity, so many times, even like me as a pastor, I heard the, the, uh, pa Pastor Mark uh, say this. He said, so many times we're living from our gifts and our callings rather than by the way that God called you and me to live, and that's by faith. Because the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. As a pastor, I can live by an anointing and a gift that God has given me for the people. And I can go as far as the, uh, the, the gift and that call will take me, but the Bible command anyone that's right, commands anyone that's righteous to live by faith. So what does it look like to live by faith? This is what we're talking about this morning. This is what all that to set up, just talking about living by faith. How many of you want to live by faith? We talked a few weeks ago about living or experiencing life and how life, if you notice that when there was a bunch of drought this summer, there were some trees that died, but most stayed alive. Why? Because the source of life was greater within than that which was around. Experiencing life is not based upon all the things around, but what you have within. And so there was a, that which was pushing back was greater than the heat that was trying to take, take down, Right? And that's how God designs for your and my life to live. So this is a super basic, super basic. But you know what? Basic doesn't mean do. How many of you know just because it's basic doesn't mean we're doing it? Spiritual obese, just because we know to exercise doesn't mean we're doing it. Just because we know to blah, blah, doesn't mean we're doing it. So what does it look like to exercise faith? For you and me, we need to put to practice or put to proof the word of God. We need, you and I need to put it to proof. You and I need to, to exercise our faith. You and I need to put, put out and see what God's word says, see his character over and over. But so many times, even, we're going to get to that in ju just a moment. I want to hit on this. So many times, there's this statement in the, in the church, and, and I've heard it said, and I hate it. Because it, it's so not right. It, the statement, uh, you know, just fake it till you make it. That's wrong. Take it till you make it. Take the word of God. The Bible talks about how it's like a medicine, how it's a healing, how it brings instruction, how it brings light, how it brings, take it till you make it. So many times we hear a word of God and, and we, we, we don't believe it and we start asking how before we believe what. You got to believe what God says before you try to figure out how he's going to do it. Because more often than not, his, what he's told you is going to come through. This is the victory that overcomes the world. It's 1 John 5, 4. Even our faith. He's going to bring it by his word, not by all of your and my try. Be it done unto you according to what you believe. You know the centurion? And so what we talk about, take it till you make it instead of fake it till you make it. Put the word of God in you. Get to know him a little bit more. Spend a little bit more time with his word. I was talking to a friend on Wednesday night. I think, uh, I don't know if you're here, Brad. Um, but I was talking with him, and he was talking about how, uh, just out of this message of hope, he's like, you know, it it's really is. Hope's based on trust. It is. He said, you know, if, if, if you know, we, we don't know each other that well yet, but, you know, in eight years, if, if I was to say, or if you were to say, hey, I'll, I'll watch your kids for you, I, I, would, I would say, okay, yeah, great, no problem. And I wouldn't think, I hope things are going to be okay. I hope you're going to take care of them. I hope he doesn't expose them to this. Hoping, because I, cause I would have this history, or I have trust. Trust. And that's really what it comes down to is trust. Do I trust the Lord? Do I trust what he says over my experience? Trust. 
Listen to some words about healing. I, uh, Pastor Evan, when she was ta- um, when when worship was going on, I uh, too was like, God want, God's wanting to heal people today. And so she had people lift their hands if you're right where you're at. And 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 this is what's so cool about the Lord, even just uh, the the application. But when that happened, there was some that were saying, "I receive wanting to receive so bad, so bad wanting, but so much of a question if." Does God really want to? Well, I just give you a couple scriptures this morning about what God wants to do. Maybe you're, I love this verse right here. <laughs> um, this is out of the Message Bible, John, or excuse me, not John, but Jeremiah 30, 17. It says, as for you, I'll come with healing, curing the incurable. I just like that verse. Uh, Jeremiah 30, 17 out of the Message Bible I'm, hey, this is the character of God. How do you know the character of somebody? You spend time with them, them and their word. You spend time with them. If he was, in the beginning was the word, and the word was God. And you're, When you spend time with the word, you're spending time with God. When you spend time with the word, you're spending time with God. You want to know a little bit about his, who he is? You want to be able to trust him? You want to be able to pray heaven on earth prayers? Because you and I, listen, the authority of the believer, or you and me having the, the place and, and having hope, You and I having hope where faith can put some substance to something. So you and I have something to walk on, to stand on. You and I need to know his character. It's not just it would be good for you. You and I, it's vital to. It's vital to if you and I believe that Jesus came and he died on the cross for the world, right? That he came and he loved the world so much. Not just you, you know, like we're saved, that's great. Now what? This message, this good news, needs to go into Judea, yeah, Acts chapter 1. From here to there to there to there. From me to those. From you to them. But if there's no hope, Jesus is the hope of the world, and we're Jesus in this world, and the church is hopeless. If we're hopeless, what are we carrying? So I'm talking about healing hopelessness today. Taking where we were hopeless. You see, depression is hopelessness. And that's really, hopelessness really is the heart disease of the church. That we, not believing God is, is who he says he is. And and so many times, more of the words that we hear are others' words instead of his words. This is why the Bible tells us in Proverbs 4, attend to my words, not Attend to my words. There's lots of words. Attend to my words. You'll find that he's, he wants to heal, come with healing to you. To do what? Cure the incurable. Well, that's impossible. You're right. With man, but with God, all things are possible. This is the word of God. This is not make-believe. This is substance. This is substance. And I could come to you today and I could speak to your head, but you know what it wouldn't have? Substance. Or I could carry the words of life, the Bible, and bring the the Bible, and you know what it would have? It would have substance. Now, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, it says this. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. So we're going to talk this morning about faith, and you and me, Maybe you're in a place of hopelessness. Maybe you're in a place of of depression. Maybe you're in a place where you need an answer. Maybe you're in a place of financial lack. Not by the will of God. Not by the will of God. I know God's will for me is to walk out of that place. I know God's will for me is to have more than enough to give unto every good work. I know that God's will for me is that I would see and look ahead and know that my path shines brighter and brighter. Why? Because this is just me trying to say, hey, you know. No, this is what God said his will is, and his word is him. It's his character. And we have a promise, the Bible tells us, by two things. Two things that we can put our hope in. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 6, it's the fact that this, that God made a promise and God made an oath. He could swear by no one greater than himself. So when he came to Abraham, he said, I'm not a man that I should lie. I'm, I'm not, it tells us this in Numbers. God's not a God that he should lie. So he could swear by no one greater. And he, so what he did is he cut covenant with himself. And he said, 
I give you my word. And I give you my word. I give you my word. And I give you my word. How many of you would think that the word might be a little bit important? If that's what, Jesus, that's what the Lord used. So, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. So I just wrote down... Um, uh, we're going to just get to this to, so I can kind of kind of get to this this wrap up. I'm going to give you just a, a just piecing it together, dot to dot. Are you ready? Dot to dot. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of what we don't see. Hebrews 11, 1 and two. But the Bible tells us in Romans 10:17, faith comes by hearing, and hearing the word of God. So. Let me give you that. Let me break down Romans 10, 17 just a little bit for you this morning. Faith comes when I hear the word of God. But hearing from God comes when I hear the word of God. Say it this way. God speaking to you and me takes the word of God being present, being read, being spoken. Faith comes when I put the word of God before me. Because when I put the word of God before me, his word comes to me. His word will come to me. He'll, this is why the Bible tells tell us uh, when he was talking to the, uh, to, the, um, to the disciples, he said, I've spoke to you in parables. That those that have heard, they don't even hear. They see, but they don't see. But you heard, you hear. And you seeing, you see. In other words, there were spiritual truths There was God's word to them that came from God's word to them. So when you and I put the word of God before us, and it might be just something that doesn't seem to really have a whole lot to do with what's going on in our life, and yet I read the word of God and faith came because his word spoke to me right exactly. So faith is the result of hearing the word of God or revelation knowledge. You and I hearing what God's saying. This is why it's so important when you're, when you're sitting here having a pen. What is God saying to you? You know what God's saying to you? It's a hundred thousand different things that came out of my mouth today. Right where you're at. I felt like, I, I, Pastor, I felt like you were just speaking to me today. I don't, were you in my living room? No. Nope. The Holy Spirit was. And having heard, you heard. And having heard the word, you heard. So faith came. Got some more faith. Got some more substance. So now, let's go back. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of what we don't see. So faith comes, Romans 10, 17, by hearing and hearing the word of God. But faith is released. Faith comes. It does, it's not just supposed to come. It's to be released. So we're talking about the exercise of our faith. What are you by the will of God? This is why Paul said over and over and over, by the will of God. I am this by the will of God. What are you by the will of God? You want to, the Bible tells us in James 3 that uh, that we put a bit in our horse's mouth to steer or a rudder on a ship. Your tongue changes the scenery. And, and, And so he says this, that faith comes by hearing, but faith is released when we speak. The Bible tells us in Luke 17, 6, that if you shall have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say. So if you believe it, if you've heard it and you're going to receive it, instead of, ah, did God really say? You're questioning whether or not you heard. When you and I say, did God really, is that really what God means? Is that really what God says? When you and I question what God says, you know what we need to do? Hey, Lord, um, I thought you said blah, 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 blah. Did you, did you say, you and I need to ask. Ask again, look again. And you know what the hap- will happen when you open that word? The Holy Spirit will be the teacher and he'll show you and it'll unfold to you, this is exactly what I said. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on. This sounds too, Lord, help my unbelief. Remember when he was talking about uh, how many times are you supposed to forgive? This, right, right here, right before this. This is not 70 times seven. This is if, you're, if your friend offends you, if they sin against you, this is Luke 17, right, right up like verse 4. He says, if your friend offends you, forgive them. Or he says, rebuke them, and if they would, then forgive them. But if it happens seven times in a day, forgive them. And you know what they say? The disciples said, Lord, help my faith. Increase my faith. Increase my faith. So you know what he says? I'm going to increase your faith. I'm going to increase your faith muscles right here. If, 
if you have this much faith, I can increase it. If you would take what you believe and you would say. The most basic, the most basic exercise of faith is you shall say. What are you saying? What are you saying about what's, what's going on? This is the word of God. So, so we see this. Now faith is the substance. Faith comes by hearing. So when, when God comes to you with his word, he gives you something to work with. When God comes to you with his word, he gives you and me something to work with. But you and I need to put it to work. How do you and I put it to work? With the words of our mouth. The same way that Ephesians chapter 2, this is teaching. You can't get all this in just one second here. The same way that Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 says, Now, by grace you've been saved through faith. So you receive the, the power, the, the gifts of God. How? By grace, through faith. So if you and I don't activate faith, which is by the release of our mouth, Romans 10, right? 9 and 10. Believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, you'll be saved. How are you? Because it's with the mouth, right? The heart man believe it, but with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So it matters what you believe, but it also matters what you say. It matters what you believe. It matters that you hear the word. It matters that you come to church and hear. And it matter, these things matter. But it matters even more or, or just as much to, to finish the deal, to close, in a sense, to, to walk in the victory that God wants you and I to walk in because it's his will for our lives that you and I would be in agreement and we would agree with what he says and says, when I see something that's not the will of God, I would be bold enough to ask according to the will of God and pray prayers according to the will of God and declare, take a promise and declare according to the word of God. So we see, again, now faith is a substance. Faith comes by hearing, but faith is released by speaking. We see that in 2 Corinthians 4.13. We believe, therefore we speak, right? We, what you believe, it's going to come out. We see that in Proverbs. What, a man's heart, what gets in there, right? It's going to come out, okay? So no word, I could say it this way, no word, no faith. Not only no word in, no word out. 1 John 5.4, I, I don't think I, you have this one in the Phillips. You probably don't have it. But the Phillips, I'm going to read it to you. Throw me my phone. I, I, it's probably in my notes, but I could find it way easier this way. Throw. This is 1 John 5.4. How many of you ever heard this 1 John 5.4 read it in a regular just translation? Now, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Have you heard that? Okay. I want to read it to you today out of the Phillips translation. The Phillips translation, uh, just a little history about the Phillips translation. He was uh, from England teaching uh, or, he was, uh, in the Orthodox Church, and his people that he was teaching, the word struggled to read their Bible. And he said, this isn't good. Not only do they struggle, they, they said, I just don't get it. And he said, they got to have it. Because he understood that faith comes, victory comes from hearing the word. So what he did is he wrote the whole New Test, rewrote the whole New Testament in, in what would, in a sense, be understandable English. Sometimes it doesn't even make sense, like as far as having the brown cow. It might just say brown cow. Like, in other words, just communicating the idea. And it, it, the, all these new translations say the Phillips translation, one of the best works ever okay, to be done to communicate the heart of the gospel. J.B. Phillips. Okay? And he also wrote four Old Testament books before he passed. Okay? This is back in early 1900s when he wrote this. Okay? Now, listen to this verse, 1 John 5, 4. In fact, this faith of ours, this faith of ours that we received is the only way in which the world has been conquered. For who could ever be said to conquer the world in the true sense except the man who really believes that Jesus is the Son of God? What's the only way to conquer the world? Faith. For you and I to walk in victory? Faith. Either you're going to walk in victory because you don't have much of a, um, much of a battle or you're going to have faith. This is how you and I walk in, in victory. So let's, let's go back to this. So faith is the substance. Faith comes by hearing. Faith is released by speaking. So what? no word, no faith. Let me say that again. Somebody say it with me. No word, no, word. no, faith. no faith. 
No word in, no faith. No word out, no faith. Victory that you're supposed to have, 1 John 5, 4. Victory, walking in victory. Steering, James chapter 3. Steering my life into victory. My mouth. What, what, what about my mouth? Just say whatever, say it, name it, blab it, grab it, grab it. No. Agree with what God says. Come under his will. You saw, it's, it's not prideful. This is humility. This is you taking him at his word, even though it looks like a yoke. That's a peach. I had people on the front row, but that's not a peach. That's a peach. You take him at his word and you come under what he says, even if somebody else says something different. And you'll steer your life. You know what happens when you release his word? This is what he tells us. Give me something to work with. You know what God needs? He needs your will. And my words release my will. This is why he says, give me something to work with. Because I can only do according to my will. But if your will's aligned with my will, I got something to work with, and I can take you according to my character and what I want to do for your good, and you'll pray prayers that have no, even in a sense, has no scriptural ask for the egg where the cash is hidden. That sounds too good to be true, and your joy would be full. Lord, give me a word for my business. What do you say about this? I say this. You're supposed to be here. I prepared good things for you to walk in. The Bible tells us before you were ever born, he prepared good things before us to walk in. Are they all written in here? No. But do you need his word to walk in them? You better believe you do. What has he said? And I, on Wednesday night, I shared this. I shared how the Lord had said some things to me and, and, and a call, the call of God on, on your life. And you've seen things in your heart. There's pictures that God paints in your heart. It's amazing how his words paint pictures. They're light. It illuminates even dark places where you can see further. And you're like, you have this hope or this picture in your heart that could be, would be, should be, might be, could it really be that God would want to do that? And I, I was talking about how when, when God called me and he, he found me, and I remember sitting over here in a call of God uh, to come here, uh, I just, I just birthed within me, within those words, were pictures. But because I was beginning to say and think all, of the, all that hasn't happened or all that he did it instead of all that he does how much he loves me instead of what I didn't see, how much he loves me instead of what I, it, it robbed me of hope, and therefore faith is the substance of things hoped for. No longer was there substance going toward what, towards the picture that God had spoken to me. I had let it on the shelf, and yet it was part of God's plan and victory in my life. So here I want to tell you this morning, get your hopes up based on his character, based upon his goodness. If you don't know his character, spend a little more time with him and his word. If, you need, if you're wondering about healing and it sounds a little bit too good to be true, well, let me just tell you, he is too good. He is too good. His goodness and his power. His goodness and his power. He's good and he's great. He's good and he's great. They both exceed exceedingly, exceedingly, more than enough, overflowing with goodness. That's his character. Eyes of fire, eyes of love. Power, yet presence. When God looks towards you, what you see is you see his face. When you see his face, this is what happens when, how he found you. He looked, his words found you. And what you heard when you heard from his words, it wasn't so much just the words, it was the mouth that spoke them. You experienced his love and his goodness. The Bible tells us that's why you and I turned to him. It was the goodness that led us to repentance. So God's desire for you is so good. And it's found, his, his desire for you is found right here. So hope, back and back up, hope is a product of knowing his character. Faith is a product of knowing his word. Hope is a product of knowing his character. But if you don't know his character because you haven't spent time with him and his word, then faith has nothing to put substance to. But it's all well and good to have substance in you. But if substance isn't coming out of you, what happens is you're, in a sense, in that place, you have to ask yourself the question, is this what I really believe? 
What do you really believe? Do you believe? What are you by the will of God? Well, you're saying it. You're saying, you're saying what you are. But are you, are, you, are you what you're supposed to be by the will of God? Using our words. Now, I'm going to close with these three verses right here. And they're just going to be really fast. Again, Hebrews 6, 13 through 15 tells us about the, the oath. But uh, I, how many of you would believe that if the Bible tells us something over and over and over again, it might be that we should do it? I'm just going to read it. Romans 1, 17. Now the just shall live by faith. So you're to experience the God kind of life, according to Romans 1, 17, by faith. By the words of your mouth, under authority. The centurion, I'll give you the next verse, Galatians 3.11. You know what it says? The same thing. Now the just, they're, they're to live by faith. So that's Romans 1.17. That's Galatians 3.11. Hebrews 10.38. I'll give you a guess what Hebrews 10.38 says. You're to experience the life of God. By, by faith. So if I'm going to experience it by faith, I've got to know how faith comes. But if I'm going to experience it by faith, I've got to understand that there, faith is a part that I play in that, and that's the release. It is by grace you've been saved. God's made it the avail, availability. He made the provision, but it is through faith. So the, me, you and me exercising our faith is how we're saved. The centurion You've heard, maybe heard this, this, this story. It's in the Gospels. Um, Jesus is coming into Capernaum, the Bible tells us, and a centurion sees that there's Jesus, and he runs up to Jesus. It's interesting how he knew it was Jesus. Well, why did he know it was Jesus? Well, because they were under Roman rule. Okay? All of Israel was under Roman rule. The Roman Empire was large, and there was great contention because between the Pharisees and Sadducees and all of those in the temple, okay, and this man by the name of John the Baptist and Jesus, okay? There was this work started with John the Baptist, and now Jesus has taken over and is baptizing more, and there's great contention. So rather than having everything go crazy in the Roman Empire, what did they do? They sent Roman centurions to be guards and to hold, keep peace in that region. So here's the centurion that's watched Jesus, because we know he knows who he is, because when Jesus entered Capernaum, all of a sudden the centurion said, oh, hey, Jesus, I had this thing come to me about my servant. Why? Because he had watched Jesus go about and do good and heal all. He, he just watched. He had seen the the lame walk. He had seen the blind eyes. The Bible tells us if all of what Jesus had done was written, there wouldn't be... He, so he had watched everywhere. Jesus was just doing signs and wonders and miracles. He said, what in the world? Why are they, these people so upset with this guy? This is just crazy. But yeah, what did he do? Hey, you five go over there and keep peace over there in Bethlehem. Hey, you 12 go over there and you take care of that. Hey, make sure everything's... Hey, come back and report to me. What's that? I got orders. I'm supposed to go to Capernaum. All right, you 15, come with me. Hey, your servant's not well. You know what I'm going to do? Look up. I see Jesus. Oh, here comes Jesus. The man. The man that goes about doing good. He, if, you, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. The man. The man that, that I mean, that girl was dirty. But he released her. The man that was in chains, that no one, no one could keep shackled, he restored him. This is that man that nothing's in. He can do anything. He can do it. I, I, I've watched him do anything. I know that man. That's Jesus. Now, when Jesus came to Capernaum, the centurion, having seen Jesus, came to him and said, Jesus, my, 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 my servant is not well. Jesus said, I'll come. He had no, no grounds other than the character. He was a Roman. He wasn't a Jew. He had no grounds legally to come other than his character. His character, 
the character of God desires all of this goodness for the world. And so Jesus said, I'll come to your house. And he said, no, 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 you don't, you don't have to come to my house. I too am one under authority. I've watched, I've watched that what you're doing, it's, you're under higher power. He said, all I need is for, I, I, I see your character. I've seen your character. I've proven it over and over and over again. And so when I saw you, hope rose in my heart. Here comes the one that could do something about my servant that I love so much. And I don't, the hope has risen in my heart. Hope rises in our heart when we know God is good. Hope, when someone comes and says, lay hands on the sick and, and they'll recover. And, and so what do we do? We, we come forward because we believe. We call for, because we believe. There's hope there. And God can move. Because you got his word and word is released at prayer. The prayer of faith would save the sick, the Bible says. This is the word. And the centurion just said this. Listen, just say the word. Because I have hope, because I know your character. But if you'll say the word, I know. It'll be done. And the Bible says at the very same hour, the word came to him later that at that very same hour, his servant was made well. That's God's good will towards you and me. God, just say the word. Just say the word. Let me hear your word concerning. Let me hear your word. Father, I'm, I thank you for faith. Lord, increase my faith. Increase my faith. Let me hear it, but increase my faith. And then I'm saying, let's put to proof. Let's put to work what we believe. Let's ask ourselves, have we opened our mouth or does the cat have our tongue? Put the word back in our mouths. Let me tell you what he has. What, and pray prayers that are bigger than just what you can do on your own. Pray prayers that ask. Ask anything according to his will. So You know, so many times his will, we find it in his character. Because everything concerning your life, every specific direction, doesn't have a chapter and verse. This is all of, all of the Word of God, but this is not all of God's words. He has specific direction for you. He has specific direction for you, and He wants you to walk in the light. He wants a lamp unto your feet and a light that shines ahead. And he wants you and me hooked up with him, knowing that, you know what, there's some things that I don't know how it would work. And with man, it's impossible. But Father, I need to hear what you have to say. And when I hear what you have to say, I'm going to get with you because I know with me it's impossible. But with you, it's possible. And then guess who gets the glory? He does. And then guess what I carry to the world around me? Hope. And I get to testify about a house that God gave me or about my son being restored or about somebody being healed or praying for somebody on a back deck that had dementia and their mind goes is completely cleared in a moment legs grown up people being healed Ty Cassie healed wholeness this is God's desire and this is what you and I are he's requiring us requiring us to carry He's good. Let's stand. And I, I'm not apologizing about the time. That's one of the other things, you know. I feel, I feel lately, um, if we come to the house of God and we are saying, God, I'm going to give you this much. I understand about children's ministry. I understand about all those kind of things. But here's the deal. Let's just commit to the Lord to say, I want all. And I'm going to stay till I'm till you're done, because sometimes God's wanting to do something for somebody, and that, and one day it might be uh, Betty, and the next Sunday it might be John, and you know three months down the road it might be you. I got to have everything that He says, because I got I'm to carry something from this place, and that's the hope of the gospel, the hope of the good news. Listen, if there's no good news, I would have despaired of had I not believed that I would see the goodness of God in this land. Are we in faith today? Do we, are we holding faith or are we holding to faith? Let's hold to it. 
Let's hold to it. Let's see victory in our lives. Let's see victory in those lives around us. Let's pray prayers that make, make that are bigger than what we can do. Let's not be safe anymore. Because we need, we need to be delivered on so many levels. On so many levels. Father, deliver us from ourselves today. We just close our eyes. We just bow our heads to you. Deliver us today from ourselves. From what we think, what we think we know. I ask you to set us free from what we think we know. Holy Spirit, be a teacher to us. Like we know you're, you do your job so well, but we just say, be a teacher to me. Teach me again. Just tell them, teach me again who you are. Let me see you again for the first time. That I would not just walk with knowledge, but I would walk with a wow of who you are, that I'd see it again, that we'd see who you are again, your goodness and your kindness. We say thank you. Just as you are, let us see you as you are. Full of goodness, full of glory, full of power, full of, full of fire, full of truth. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus, and you've never made him the Lord and Savior of your life, the Bible tells us this, that if you believe in your heart and you stay with your mouth, you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, you would be saved. If you've never done that, with our heads bowed, our eyes closed, if that's you, you, you want to make sure that you know Jesus, you want to give your life to him today, whether you might be online, but in this room, I want you to lift your hand. If you don't know Jesus, if you've never get confessed him as Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I don't, I don't see any hands in this house. But if you're, maybe you're online, we're going to pray this prayer. And, and, and the Bible says if you believe in your heart and you say with your mouth, um, you'll be saved. So we're just going to pray this prayer. Just I'll lead you in it. Just say this after me. Father, today, I am willing to receive what you say over what I think, over what my understanding can comprehend. And that is that you love me so much that you gave your son, Jesus, for me. Today, I, I trust him. I trust Jesus for the price of my sin. And I confess Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for saving me, for making a way for me to be, at, for me to be forever with you. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. Um, if you need healing in your body, if you would like hands laid on you, or you can do this with the people next to you. But we, the, the front's always open. God bless you. We'll see you Wednesday. Have a great week.